In the last video, we uh, had to make the motor base or start making the sketch for the motor base. And I found the easiest way uh, to do this was to uh, start off with a Z shape sketch, which we did in the last video. Now, to make this into um, a full base, I found that the easiest thing to do was to add the uh, corresponding sketch on the opposite side and uh, just join the two together as a single sketch. So we have uh, these elements over here which are equal and coincident with the same elements that we drew on the other side. And then basically just a line connecting the two in the middle. That allows me to uh, take the original base extrude and uh, make it entirely consistent right across. That way all I need to do is cut out this piece in the middle uh, based on that line that I created and we'd have two pieces uh, that we can use for the base. So that's what I did. Uh, I put the slots in. The slots have uh, uh, were done in the previous video as well. They were just lined up with the center points of the center lines of the holes on the bottom of the motor and they were coincident with the center point of this slot. Next I just cut through using that line that I had created in the in initial sketch, just making my uh, uh, rectangle coincident with uh, the vertexes of that line. And then I started drawing a piece on the bottom to represent the braces at the ends uh, using the same thickness as the material that I'm using for the uh, the left and right side and that's just a simple sketch that was a single line right in the center extruded mid-plane so that it fits in between the two left and right hand pieces with a, a little bit of clearance and then I added a leg coming down to represent the uh, uh, to make this look more like an angle and then went in and added a couple of fillets so, so, so what I'm doing here is basically adding an inside fillet the same radius the radius is the same as the thickness of the material so that's three millimeters there and I needed to add another fillet on the outside to make it look like an angle and there the radius was six millimeters so that's just three plus the thickness. So that it looks consistent right the way across. That got me the pieces that uh, would span either end of this motor base. Then it was just a simple matter to mirror that piece across the other side. Now what fits in here in the center, you've also got a, as another separate base which actually has the studs which poke through these slots which carry the motor and I'm going to leave that particular part off uh, because we're not making this part we're actually purchasing it I just needed the, the outside geometry uh, and the right shape so that I can uh, make this look correct on on the assembly the, the part itself is being purchased. It only costs $85 for the whole base, so there's no way uh, with me drawing it and then farming it out for manufacturer that we'd be able to make it cheaper. So uh, this is really just for visualization, this base. The next step was to start putting holes in the uh, uh, flanges uh, so that I could mount this base to the table and at this stage I don't know yet what the, those dimensions are. I'm going to have to speak to uh, the manufacturer of the motor base because these dimensions were not shown on the uh, website. So unfortunately I have to phone them up and try to find out what they are. The, then I just mirror the holes. Right, the, right now these holes are just estimated as to where they go. I just chose 3 and 3 eighths um, and uh, a 9 16 hole three quarters of an inch from the edge just basically guessing at what I thought 
the locations would be. But of course, I have to find out later exactly where they're going to go. And so then, just by mirroring, I'm putting in the holes in the uh, four locations on the uh, on the rest of the bracket. And that takes care of the uh, motor slide base so that we can actually put, have something to put the motor on top of and be able to move forward with this design.